Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to Mark's Tech. So I just got the, the brand new MacBook Air, the M1, Apple Silicon MacBook Air. And I've heard rumors that this is actually more powerful than my $3,500 MacBook Pro. If that's the case, oh boy, I'm gonna be pissed. But anyway, I wanted an excuse to make a video, so this is the reason I'm making this video. Just so I can edit this on here and see how it performs. So you guys are my guinea pigs. Welcome. But the video you are watching is a part one. I'm going to tell you guys, well, you guys read the title, why the Xbox is better than the PlayStation. Now, for all you fanboys out there, I'm ready. Let's go, I'm ready. The second part, which I'll make in a couple days, is going to be the same thing, except the other way around. I'm gonna tell you guys why the PlayStation is better than the Xbox. Again, fanboys, I'm ready. So the first reason is a double-edged sword, meaning it's good and it's bad. And I'm talking about games. As you guys know from my previous video, Xbox has a ton of games and it's also backwards compatible with the original Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and well, obviously Xbox Series X. That's amazing if you have a huge catalog of games on your wall somewhere, maybe in your safe, maybe in your car, your girlfriend's house, I don't know. You can still play those games on the Xbox Series X. Now the downside is that every single person in the world who has an Xbox Series X right now is playing old games. Basically every single launch title is pushed back. So yeah. If you guys did not get your hands on the Xbox Series X, listen, don't worry. Stop worrying. There are no games out for it yet. Just relax. Play your Xbox One. There you go. The second reason is the awesome feature of Quick Resume. If you're playing a game and you leave that game, that game is actually stored on the console and it's all ready to go when you come back to it. You'll know if the game supports Quick Resume if you see a Quick Resume icon when you open that game back up. Now this is great for those moments that you are playing a game and you go to another game but your friend calls you over back to that game, you can just go back to the game, no loading, no nothing, just fast, easy, simple, good to go. Now the third reason is that you can actually buy extended storage right now for the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Now, it'll cost you a pretty dime coming in at $220, but hey, if you want one terabytes, you got it. It'll increase the storage of the Xbox Series X to a total of two terabytes and the Xbox Series S to a total of a terabyte and a half. Uh, that's obviously before the system takes up its fair share. The best part is it is the same exact speed as the internal SSD, so you can still take full advantage of your powerful console. Another huge benefit of the uh, Xbox Series X is Game Pass. Now, while it's not exclusive to Xbox Series X, it will still make your experience much better. For a small monthly fee, you can play hundreds of games. Think of it as going to Blockbuster, but you're not going to Blockbuster. Do you guys remember Blockbuster? Let me know. Now, Game Pass Ultimate, for example, is $15 a month, which gets you access to a massive catalog of games they can play on your console, then switch over to your PC and then play on the go with your Android phone, all while having Xbox Live. That's right, for $15 a month, you get all that and Xbox Live, and on top of that, you also get EA Play bundled in. Do I even need to say anything more? That is like the biggest plus side I've ever seen, and it's definitely worth it. Now, another weird benefit is actually the size of the console, and especially if you get the Series S, which is much, much smaller. The PS5 is huge, and people are literally having a hard time finding out where to put it in their house. The Series X has a much smaller footprint and is much shorter as well, making it a very easy to manage console, and you can store it anywhere you would like. Since the Xbox is smaller, you guys would probably be thinking that the Xbox has a hard time managing heat, and that is not the case at all. From the hours I've put into gaming on the Xbox Series X, I literally never heard the fan once. I just hear this very nice kind of monotone hum. Not annoying hum, but I, it's the hum that you, can, you, you know your console's on, basically. That's it. That's from hours of gaming. If you play for like an hour at most, you're not gonna hear the fans ramp up at all. Unless you keep your house at like 85 Fahrenheit, then you know, it might ramp up. And obviously if the fans are not ramping up, that means the console is staying cool, which is, hey, a good thing. Fun fact, the Xbox Series X is actually a little bit quieter than my PlayStation 5. So there's that. So those are my top picks on why the Xbox Series X is better than the PlayStation 5. And hey, if I miss something, leave them down in the comments below for me to read and for others to read as well. Now remember, there's another video to this that's coming out soon on why the PlayStation is better than the Xbox. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and that's it. This was Mark from Mark's Tech. Adios.